Hello everybody and welcome. We are going to be doing common DIY repairs that you can do at home. Total disclaimer here. I am not a professional repair person by any means. I do all of this as a hobby. I have learned to disassemble and reassemble flutes on my own, and I am comfortable with doing these things to my flute. If you are not comfortable, do not attempt this, okay? I accept no liability to anyone that messes up their flute by watching me, okay? Just don't. If you're not comfortable or you really just don't know what you're doing, don't. Find a reputable flute technician. They will be able to help you a lot more than somebody on YouTube. Please, please. But if you are DIY friendly and have a basic knowledge of mechanics and an understanding of how the flute works, definitely try to jump in. I am going to be going over two of the most common things that I have to do to my flutes or flutes that I trial. As you guys remember, I've had two flutes that I trialed from two different places that had a spring come loose that I ended up having to fix. I'm gonna show you how I did that today. I'm also gonna go over key alignment and just making sure that we don't have any leaks. Another disclaimer is this flute that I am going to be showing you things on has not had an overhaul. I actually repatted this myself and probably very poorly. Um, it does play, but <laughs> um, not very well. And it does need overhauled again by somebody that knows what they're doing. So I just wanted to let you guys know that because there are some leaks that are still in this flute. It does play, um, but <laughs> again, it needs to see a professional anyways. I'm just kind of using it to show you guys what I did to get everything to kind of line back up for the most part. Again, not a professional job but it worked it off for me. So let's jump in, let's get set up. All right guys, don't mind my little, <laughs> my stand here. Uh, but so I have everything kind of set up here. I am using my Gemeinhart 3SS for our demonstration. I love the serial number, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, <laughs> so I'm actually hanging on to this one. Um, this is gonna be my demonstration flute, so hopefully that's all cool with you guys. I also have a couple screwdrivers. I have two different screwdrivers and a spring hook. I know not everybody has a spring hook though. So I do, um, I'll show you how to use it if you do wanna get one. I don't think mine was too expensive. I wanna say it was under $10. I'm pretty sure I got it off of Amazon as well. I can link it down below if I can find it. If they still make it, I will link it down below or I'll find you guys something that's equivalent on Amazon. Um, this screwdriver set, I actually got at the dollar store, 100%. This is a dollar store. This is what it looks like. I don't know that they make this anymore, but they make something similar, I believe. Um, but it has a very tiny, teeny, tiny little screwdriver, uh, bit that you can use. And it fits very nicely into some of these adjustment screws, which I'll show you guys how to do. I do want you guys to be aware this is a DIY at your own risk, okay? But I will show you guys a little bit on my Gemeinhart flute here, how to do some of the adjustments just to make sure that everything is sealing properly. Um, I will also show you guys if a spring comes out, which has been, actually has happened to me a few times. Um, usually it's one of these springs over here that seems to happen to me a lot. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys through the spring hook because it is so, so much easier to use the spring hook on this than to use a screwdriver. You can use a screwdriver. It's just a lot more, one, dangerous because this is pointy um, and it's sharp. So you can either stab yourself, you can stab your flute, scratch your flute, um, be extra, extra, extra careful if you're going to be using this um, to do any spring work. Um, honestly, I don't recommend it just because it is so easy to mess up your flute with a screwdriver. It's just so much easier to use the spring hook tool. It's worth the investment to just get one, even if you get one off of Amazon, like I said, I'll link it below. Um, please, please, please just be safe <laughs> about all of this. 
um, but I will show you how to do it with the screwdriver. Also, it takes about four times longer for me to do anything with the screwdriver than it does with a spring hook, depending on where the spring is at. All right, so one of the more common springs that gets out of alignment, which I kind of was telling you guys earlier, is one of these springs over here, which is gonna be a little bit hard to tell because we also have our trill spring here. So this is connected to our trill key right here, that spring is. But there's a spring in here that is connected to this key and keeps this key going up and down. Um, it also moves this key right here. So, if that spring were to come undone, which I have seen happen a lot, it might be easier to just do it this way. There we go. Um, then, I actually still have decent bounce to this, which I think is actually what has happened to me. I notice it whenever I'm going through uh, chromatics and I'm like, wait, wait, what? Um, anyway, so I, I just kind of undid that really quick. Let's go back in and you can see the little post right there and you see that the spring is on the other side of it. So it's actually on this side of it. It needs to be on the other side. So with your spring hook, this little section is notched. You will just get onto that spring, push it around that post and back on. Um, I did not get it that time, but that's okay because I want to show you guys how to do it from this way. You can try to do it come in this way, um, but I find that that's a little bit harder. Um, I like to come from the back end. You'll need to push it down to go around that post and then up. And then you can even kind of twist your, your hook to make sure that it's not getting caught on that first bar there. Um, and now it's back in its little spot. You can do that pretty much for any of these springs. It just kind of depends on where it's at to depend on how hard it is to get to. Because um, even like your uh, A flat or G sharp key here, um, that spring, see if I can even see it, it's way in there, right here. Where I'm touching right there. And it actually usually just sits on the post. I don't know that it has, oh, it does. Um, I can see it right there. It does have a little uh, hook post right there. I wonder if you can see it from this side. It's so hard to see it from this side because there's so much going on in here. Um, and it's gonna be even worse if you have an offset G uh, because all of this is has its own little mechanism and it's gonna be hard to get into there. It's, it's a mess, um, which actually I can show you. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys on this very, very old uh, CG con flute that I have that I need to restore. You see how you have all these different, because it's an offset G, and it's so hard to get into these little crevices trying to get to those uh, springs just because everything is so, there's a lot going on right in this little section here. So, um, this is also a good one to kind of show you the difference between some flutes, um, like this flute, Micah Meinhardt has the springs kind of off to the side, the CG Con. Now this is, this is from like 1904. It, the foot joint doesn't even come off. It's all one piece. Um, so this is very old technology, um, but you see that the adjustment screws are actually in the keys and um, those push down on these little tables right here to help with the adjustment and making sure that everything is closing properly. I definitely need new uh, pads on this. Um, so like I said, this is super old technology, but this is one of the only offset G flutes that I have. So um, this is the only really example that I can uh, show you versus my inline is just a little bit simpler because everything is all together here. So, okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming here. Sometimes you'll see springs, um, like the trill springs, there's one over here and then there's one over here which will go between the two. So this, this first trill key is the spring that's over here. 
the second trill key is the spring that's over here. And you will notice if we get that unhooked here, let's come at it from this way. Well, I guess I just need to, oh, maybe I can just do it from this way. Yeah. There we go. So if you don't have that in there, whenever you go to trill, see it, it I have to manually lift it up and there's a hole in your flute. Plus it's not giving pressure to that key either, so you will most likely leak. You see how there's not as much space on this as there is on this. Now granted, this also has not been overhauled yet, so things are probably a little bit out of alignment there, but we'll get that back together. Easy peasy with our spring hook. Now, let's go in with our screwdriver and just see how long that takes me to put back together. Oh, that didn't take long at all. All right, so you can definitely do it with a screwdriver as well, just kind of using the, using it vertically to get around your spring like that and moving things around like that. Pretty easy actually with a screwdriver as well. Just have to be so super, super careful because you could lose that spring and then go like straight through, especially if you have like your finger over here, please be careful because you will stab yourself. And this is sharp, okay? This is not as sharp, it's still sharp. I won't lie to you, it's still sharp, but <laughs> it's not as sharp. All right, so let's go on to adjusting screws. So these adjustment screws are going to determine where this sets whenever you push this key down. So let's wonk this up. We're gonna go in and we're gonna twist to the left. So same principle, lefty loosey, righty tighty, okay? Now, whenever I push this down, you see, whoa, that's way out of alignment, right? Because I, I did a whole lot. We need to get that to sit flush. Um, if you notice that your flute is not being flush like that, um, at least for the most part, that probably could be adjusted slightly, maybe not. Um, the adjustment screws are what's going to do that. So the adjustment screws on this side will always go to this key here, okay? So yeah, no bueno. All right, so let's go in with our screwdriver and what I usually do is I will hold the key down while I'm screwing. Let's get lined up here. There we go. While I'm screwing and pretty, oh, please be careful as well. Just like I just showed you, it is very easy to come right off. And you wanna get kind of close to where it's starting to give you a little bit of resistance here and then stop and check it. And you'll want to do Again, this has not been overhauled, so this is not perfect by any means. I'm probably going to give it like just a teensy tiny bit more. Let's see if I can get my screwdriver in there. And then call that good until you can have a technician, an actual technician, look at it and do, you know, all the shimming, all the padding, everything. Um, but same thing with like this key. So... This key also brings down this key. And as you can tell, I have a little bit of play here, but that's okay. Um, what if that is wonky, right? Let's undo that. I guess I don't need to do very much because you'll be able to tell. Yeah, look at that. That's awful, right? So we're gonna push it down, get our screwdriver lined up there. I'm going to keep my my pinky on it just to kind of help and then we're going to twist to start closing that. Let's see, I got off of my screw there. Oh man, this isn't working. It's not wanting to stay inside the screw there. Okay, 
to where we're kind of close. We're pretty close there. And you can also test that out a little bit too. Can you push it down any further? Not really. So that's pretty much where it needs to be. There we go. Until we can get to a flute technician, this will get you through whatever you need to do. Now, things to note, your B flat, uh, B and B flat keys have their own springs that run on the actual body of the flute. So there's nothing that you can really do with those. Um, that's mostly it, I believe. There really isn't too, too much to a flute. So I'll probably do a tear down of the flute and of a, an offset G flute as well because the tear down is just a tiny, tiny, teeny bit different whenever you have that extra uh, G key sitting off to the side. Um, but yeah, so that is some simple at home adjustments and repairs that you can do with your flute without having to go to a technician. And there you have it. So we just went through two of the most common repairs that I have had to do on my own flutes and trial flutes in the past. I hope it helps somebody in the future just to kind of do some quick little adjustments that you can do at home to kind of help squash some of those leaks. Now, again, I am not a professional repair person. Please find a reputable flute technician and I will actually have a video coming up about how to find a reputable flute technician. But this is a decent way for somebody that might not have the money to be able to spend on a professional flute technician to be able to kind of seal a couple of things and get you by until you can. Um, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next week.